Hey everybody, Rob Ferretti here with the much anticipated video on what I do for a living. And the answer is a lot. And it may not seem like that because you watch the videos and you just see the fun side of everything. But believe it or not, a lot of the times that you're watching me out there having fun, I'm actually working. And I know it's hard to grasp for some people and it's the dream of others. Uh, it just means I've, I've made the right sequence of decisions to be able to enjoy life while being able to make money at the same time. So right now I'm currently in three fields. I'm in the entertainment field, which is essentially the, the videos that you see um, that is work. Whether you think it's work or not, it is work. Um, and anyone who has tried to start a YouTube channel or make a video can attest to that. It is not easy. It's much easier than it looks when done properly, but it's not easy. Uh, the second thing I do is I'm in the automotive industry. I work with rental car companies and uh, I'll get into the whole story about how I started with that. But essentially I help with creating processes, problem solving, um, and, and I'll get into the specific task. We'll, we'll, skip, to, we'll skip to that in a minute. Uh, last thing I do is travel. I have a travel company and that travel company is called Adventure Drives. So let me break them down one at a time. I will sort of tell you what I do in each respective field and that constitutes what I do for a living. The only thing that these things have in common is that they consume all of my time. And when I say to consume all of my time, I am essentially always working. I'm working more than I'm not. Um, and for somebody who's married and has a kid, that's a lot of commitment. And virtually I'm working every night. I'm up till one, two in the morning. I keep very, very late hours in, on the East Coast because I get a lot of work done between nine o'clock and two o'clock because I, my phone is not blowing up as it normally would be during the day. So all of this, the, the common thread is that even when I started this way back in like 01, 02, I was always working. If I had time and I wasn't monetizing that time, I felt like I wasn't doing something right. So I've just been able to monetize it in a way that I was prioritizing having fun and then figuring out a way to monetize it while having fun. It started early on with the videos, uh, the video series. I started that with Life After the Quarter Mile. Um, this is back in a one before YouTube existed, before Blu-ray, before all of that stuff. You were shooting on handy cams and 480p. So if you go back and can dig up one of the Life After the Quarter Mile videos, you probably won't be too impressed. I tested the market. How I got into that was I said, I see internet videos. I saw people making internet videos. I had a Corvette at the time. So I went out, I grabbed a camera, I started putting up videos and there was no like common hosting server back then. So I would go to my friends who were working in tech stuff and say, hey, could you host this video? They'd stuff it on some company server where they wouldn't see. The traffic would spike on their server. They'd get like a $3,000 bill. They'd pull the video off and say like, yo, I can't host your videos anymore. When I realized that I was putting up content that entertained people to the point that it could cost somebody money, I figured out there's got to be a way for me to monetize this and make somebody money or make me money at least. Uh, the difference is that when I did that, I had to go and learn how to edit because putting up a clip of like, here's a clip of a race is much different than putting out finished product. I took a editing class at Ramapo College on how to edit and this is how long ago that was. They were teaching us how to splice film as well as digital editing techniques. So that company was essentially what I was doing. I started up, I made a DVD to test the water. It was called Life After the Quarter Mile. And that DVD, I sold it at the New York Auto Show. I sold it on my website, which was beyondthequarter.com. This is back in the day. I don't have that website anymore. It's then superseded to super speeders. Um, so that was something that was great. I was working as a caddy at the time at a golf course uh, because I was only doing about three months a year of actual filming and editing. So that left me a lot of free time. I was going to different car shows, car events. Uh, that is when I met Noah. So I met Noah at a car event and the thing that we both had in common is that neither of us had a Ferrari and we were at a Ferrari event. So two young guys at a Ferrari event and the one common theme is that we were both motivated. Uh, Noah mentioned he was looking to start an exotic car rental company. I said, that sounds like a terrible idea, but good luck with it. Didn't see him again until a few months later when, or maybe probably eight months later, when I was doing a drive, he called up and said he was going to come out, showed up with his Ferrari 360 and he said, I got my car, I'm starting the company. I said, good for you, good luck with that. Uh, we kept in touch after that because he was driving a Ferrari. I thought it was cool. And I know a guy who was driving around a Ferrari and he's a young guy. Um, that turned into uh, my skill set, which is problem solving, fixing things, knowledge of cars, 
ended up benefiting Noah tremendously because he did not have that skill set. He was good at marketing. He was good at, and we were sort of complementary in that way. He was good at business management and marketing, but he wasn't good with the car. So as soon as he came to me and said, oh, somebody whacked up the front fender on my car. It's going to be out for three weeks and it's going to cost me $15,000. I said, that doesn't make a lot of sense. That thing looks like you could fix it in a couple of days and it should cost you $2,000. He's like, I don't believe you. I'm like, yeah, hey, come here. So we got the car fixed in a couple of days for a couple thousand dollars and his life changed forever. He's like, all right, you're coming with me. And I essentially started working with Gotham Dream Cars from the onset. Uh, I helped develop that company, eventually was put in charge of the operations. Um, and then that then led to me saying, well, you know what? I also like, I, I did Bull Run in 06. That, that was all an opportunity for making money with Gotham Dream Cars, having access to like the Ford GT. We took that out doing these road rallies. Doing those road rallies, I said, wow, this is a lot of fun, but they could be done better. I saw the opportunity and I came up with something called Adventure Drives. Uh, Adventure Drives is something that we started last year. We went out, we did it. It's, it's not as gumball, cannonball, uh, gold rush rally as the other rallies. There's no real competition. There's no, it's, it's a luxury driving trip. So if you can think about um, Abercrombie and Kent or something along those lines. It's a high-end trip for people that have sort of graduated past the, I want to just go blitz down the highway and beat my friend to the location, to people that are out there looking to enjoy different aspects that the world has to offer in a comfortable, luxurious, convenient manner, but with the main mode of transportation being an automobile and usually exotic automobiles and sports cars. So I saw that market, that company's just started. We're doing another drive this year. This is now our second year. And those are the three businesses that I do. Um, so for the, uh, for the rental, for the adventure drive stuff, I do all of the logistics. I do the planning. Um, I help uh, organize the routes, all stuff that comes very easy to me. Uh, I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. That's the, the common thread here is everything that I've done is something that comes easy to me because it's a skill that I have and I've been able to monetize it. And the fact that I like cars, I've been able to tie it all into cars. That's why you see the common theme across all the businesses are cars. Uh, with the rental company, I help develop processes. I'm great at problem solving. Uh, I'm great at developing different uh, product ideas. Not so much in the way of marketing, um, but I, I do focus on the stuff that I'm good at, which is helping manage people. So across the board, those are the three things I'm currently doing. Um, that may change as the years go on, but right now my plate is full. I work all the time, and that's why I'm able to afford the stuff that you see I'm able to afford. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I hope that explains what I do for a living. I think it's very important. It's a fair question because, I mean, it's not a hard thing to look up, but it's a fair question to ask what I do for a living because you see my lifestyle or at least aspects of my lifestyle on film. So it's a fair question to ask what I do. And I don't appreciate it when somebody doesn't have a clear answer as to what they do. I do things. I work... That's bullshit. If you have a legitimate job and you make money in legitimate ways, you can explain it to people the way I've explained it to you. Thank you for watching. Go work hard out there. I appreciate your support on the channel. I appreciate your support uh, through everybody that's rented cars and helped me out through that avenue. Uh, you guys rock. I will catch you on the next video. Awesome.